guys, thanks for checking out this second video about some of the bass guitar gear I've used uh, over the years and why I have what I have and uh, just a little bit about uh, what I use and, and what's in these videos that you've seen before. I talked last time about a little Fender 25 watt practice amp that I use. I've moved it down here, as you can see, and I've put on top of it the uh, Fender Rumble 60. And this is a 60 watt bass amp. It's actually a little more advanced than the uh, 25 watt BXR I mentioned earlier. This one has um, actually has passive and um, active inputs. It has a mid scoop, which is kind of interesting. It has a volume, then it has bass, two mids, and a treble. So it's got a little more, uh, got a little more options in terms of the sound you want to get out of this one. Uh, it's also got a CD or RCA inputs. It's got effects in and out. It's got a headphone jack, and then it also has a line out, a quarter inch line out. It does not have an XLR line out. So again, I'm not, I've never used um, effects processors through this. I've never used it as a line out. And frankly, I don't use this amp very often. There's kind of an interesting story behind this. Uh, I found this amp at a flea market years ago for $40. It had the traditional Fender kind of carpet on it. Uh, and frankly, it was beat all to heck. It, a, a, a cat had scratched, I used it as a scratching post. Uh, when I took this, I took it completely down to the wooden box. There was um, cat hair in it. There was mice poop in it. There were uh, cigarette butts in it. There was this old cigarette package in there. I don't know if they got in through the bottom. That's the only way I know they got in there. This thing was totally trashed, and as I'm telling you about this, I'm showing some videos of what it looked like when I got it. So I took all the hardware off, took everything apart down to the wood, got rid of all that nasty carpet, sanded it down as much as I could down to the original wood. It was really not, it's not a very well-made cabinet anyway. It's pretty cheap particle board type stuff. It's not like it's really good plywood or anything like that. Um, but I paid $40 for it and it was kind of a project that was like, what the heck? If it comes out, it works out fine, it works out. If it doesn't, I'm only out 40 bucks. So once I got it stripped down, I actually wanted it to be this specific color. I don't know if Fender's ever made kind of a cream color like this, <clears throat> but that's the color I wanted. And I was trying to figure out how to get this color and kind of do it the best way I could. I thought about putting some colored, um, like vinyl back on it or maybe leather. I looked at a bunch of different options and what I ended up doing was taking the cabinet, the, the box, to a Linex uh, shop that does beds uh, and liners for truck beds. And sure enough, I've heard that they've done this before to different uh, music gear and speaker cabinets usually. They sprayed this thing down in black and I said I wanted it this color, talked to them about this and made sure they knew what I was doing and what my final uh, vision was for this and what they suggested was to paint it black. They could have painted it this color um, It would have cost a little more and they weren't sure if they could match it up and frankly they didn't really want to do it because For them to put a different color than black in their spray guns would have been a pretty uh, Pretty expensive and pretty elaborate process for them. So what they suggested is I paint this cabinet black and then let it sit for a little bit, but not any more than 12 hours within, or 24 hours, excuse me. So they suggested that within 24 hours, the paint is somewhat dry, or the Linex lining is somewhat dry, but not completely dry. Then go ahead and paint this cabinet whatever color I wanted, and the paint would adhere best to it. So that's what I did. I took it to a Linex uh, company, they painted it, I took it home, Got it back in the afternoon. The next morning I started painting this and I put, I think, three coats of paint on it to get what I wanted. Again, I'm showing you some pictures of, uh, of the process and the befores and afters. The reason I wanted this color though is uh, that I have this Ibanez semi-acoustic guitar or bass. Uh, it's an AB200. These are really hard to find. It was pretty, pretty easy to find the black version of this. But to find this uh, cream color version was pretty hard to find. And I actually found this one at, a, I think, a guitar center 
in St. Louis. And fortunately, I was in St. Louis for a project and picked it up on my way home and had it. So that's why, that's the story behind this Fender Rumble 60 that I spent 40 bucks on. I did spend about another $100 on the paint to get it to look this color. Uh, but really for 140 bucks, it's kind of a cool matching set. And I don't play the acoustic, semi, semi hollow acoustic very often. I've actually done uh, just a couple of gigs with this and they were really short things. I got this because I think it's just a cool looking bass. I've always thought uh, semi hollow guitars and basses were cool. They're kind of hard to find in basses. Um, and especially in this color. And I always thought if I did, uh, you know, like a coffee shop gig or played in a small kind of acoustic thing that this would work really well for that. But I just haven't had the opportunity to, to do something like that. One final feature about this Fender Rumble that I had no clue. I've never owned any Fender amps before. They just weren't really my preferred amp. Um, but one thing that's cool about this amp is when you power it on, you'll see down here, they've got a row of LED lights in the back of this cabinet that has a power switch on the back, so I can turn them on or off. I just leave it on all the time because I think that red glow is kind of cool. I thought about swapping it out with some maybe color changing LEDs, but this is what it came with. So uh, I think I've put enough time and effort into this thing. I'm going to leave it like it is. So that's it for this video. Thanks for checking this video out. Uh, the next couple of amps I'm going to show you are cool classic old amps that um, I've either owned before or played for before, have a ton of sentimental value to me. And just recently I was able to pick up both of these amps and I'm excited to show about show you uh, those amps in a future video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.